Welcome back guys, we're playing Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Uh, this will be a long video about crafting because I had some input on my previous video about crafting that it was not covering the basics well enough. So I was thinking, well I can make a video uh, of uh, us doing it basically from the start. So we are running some mods. Uh, they don't really heavily affect crafting, uh, just a little bit, but those mods make it so we have to do sandbox. Uh, we're using Karadia Expanded, uh, a mod called Banner Kings, and a realistic battle mod, but we won't really see any combat in this video, so realistic battle mod doesn't really apply. Um, I will leave uh, still leave mods link in the description if you're interested, because some of these uh, features are different, especially when it comes to character creation. Uh, Career Expanded adds nine more kingdoms, uh, which is awesome. Basically, for crafting, you can do it with any culture. I'm just gonna. Oof, that, that's weird. Hopefully, we don't get a crash. Uh, you can do it with any culture. Here, you can quickly see the new ones. I'm not, I'm not gonna go into this. Uh, if you want to know more about Credit Expanded, I recommend you watch the pro prologue episode of my Credit Expanded campaign here on YouTube. Uh, ask me in the comments if you can find it, and I will directly link you to it. Uh, we're just gonna pick Nordling because I know that the starting position of the Nordling is right by settlement, which got plenty of wood. So regardless of what culture you pick here, you need to go to a settlement fairly early if you want to start blacksmithing which has wood uh, like a natural resource in it so it's gonna pick this uh, we're not gonna bother at all about the, the looks here here you can adjust uh, a bit just to boost crafting if you want to do uh, when I'm talking about crafting I'm talking about smithing uh, so we're actually gonna look at the optimal uh, start up for smithing. You can go with any and just level up smithing afterwards But uh, we're gonna see here different options anything adding to smithing. Yeah, there's one um, Anything adding to smithing or endurance because endurance here is affecting the progression of smithing as well uh, Anything here. Yeah, that one gives endurance. So let's go with that one that one gives smithing straight off the bat. So let's go with that one, I think. Yeah, let's go with that one, of course. And let's see here, something which gives endurance. There's one. So let's go with that one. Uh, you can pick any here and just level that one up afterwards. We're just gonna make it easy for yourselves and make the ultimate blacksmith from straight off and let's pick that one three points in blacksmithing already and we're gonna start at any age I prefer starting young so let's do that and this doesn't really matter and this doesn't really matter huh really uh, ding then and uh, here we can have everything on the hardest if you want to. I normally go that way. Doesn't really affect blacksmithing. This is Banner King's options. Uh, so we're not gonna go into this because I will make this applicable to vanilla. So we're gonna have a vanilla start. And this is also Banner King's tutorial. So we're not gonna go into this stuff. So basically here we spawn close to the settlement. I think this, I, I think it's Vanilla Seabird as well. If we zoom out here, this is the Karate Expanded map. It adds uh, several kingdoms, basically splits the big kingdoms into three or two, I mean. Uh, splits the empire into uh, more parts, uh, adds a few settlements, changes, posi changes position of a few settlements. So, 
if Saber isn't a good starting point for you, you might want to look. But anyway, you want to look for settlements which got wood, like Al Alabat here, it's got wood on it. We're not going to head there, we're going to head to Saber because we're going to rely on that they do have some resources there. Now as you saw, first thing which happened when we moved a bit, we moved, jumped into the city to avoid getting jumped here. So basically what we, want, what we want to do now is just quickly level up here and we're going to put everything into blacksmithing and everything into endurance. The blacksmithing is really good for certain things because it gives you extra attribute points. At level 150 it gives you either one control or one wire. At level uh, 225 it gives you at least one endurance or one focus point but of course you want the endurance here i actually level up blacksmithing on all my companions one they can help you with blacksmithing i will show you once we find a companion and two those extra uh what are they called attribute points will benefit a lot and you pick one up from here another thing which i do try and push leveling up all my characters but that's because i'm a really foot soldier type of guy i like foot combat i don't really like utilize utilizing cavalry more than i have to uh, if they're archers or, or melee i don't care but i like foot based combat i feel those troops are a bit easier to control than cavalry athletics also have in their tree extra um, attribute points one at 175, which is either an endurance, yeah, either an endurance or an endurance, and one at the next level after that, 200. So 175 and 200. 175, you get an extra endurance point, and 200, you get to choose either for control or fight. So that basically means that when i start up i don't want to put more than eight points here i'm a fairly heavy blacksmithing guy i want to get as high blacksmithing on my main as possible so i always aim to without getting the bonuses of these to get to eight endurance points and then i push that up to maximum 10 with the extra bonus points from athletics and blacksmithing so let's get back into blacksmithing I'm just gonna put on a point in the athletics here. We're not gonna get that far in this video, but just for the sake of it. Uh, <clears throat> here, I always, always, always choose efficient charcoal maker. Uh, I will show you why in a bit. Uh, and we're gonna get back out here to trade up. We do start with a thousand dinar. You don't wanna recruit any troops. However, you do want to take a look in here. Fortunately, there is a companion here, but I don't think we have the money to actually well, hire him. But we're going to have a quick talk with him and see. No, we can't afford him right now. That's because we have started. So to make a bit of money here, we're going to sell all our clothes. We're going to go in naked. We can keep the horse if we want to in, in our inventory because Pack animals are great. We're gonna sell all our clothing. All right, we're gonna be a naked little blacksmith here. So selling all of this, all of this, but we're holding on to our weapons. All right, holding on to our weapons. Uh, they actually didn't have much money here, so they ended up negative, but that's okay. You do wanna keep a bit of stash of food. Nothing fancy, just a little bit. So you don't start starving, especially when you get the companion, you want to keep that up and running. Here's what we're looking for though. Uh, you want hardwood. Uh, these different types are because of banner kings. doesn't really matter which you have. So we're going to go for the cheaper one. Let's buy a few. Uh, you see they're negative here because we sold our gear and it's just the start of the game. So the prosperity is like zeroed. So we're just gonna buy hardwood here, but we can actually have a lookout for these weapons. We're gonna buy one of these. That's too expensive for us right now. Uh, yeah, we could buy one of those as well. We do have one. 
but that we're still positive. Let's see how much that uh, companion actually costs because it didn't really tell us. So we're gonna throw back one axe that basically turns us to we have 2300 uh, and some change to 2800. Sorry, but we're gonna sell all that stuff and go back quickly into the tavern. Ask him oh. if he's still available. Yeah, we can afford him. And we're gonna do the same thing with him. We're gonna go into Trader and they can switch to the next character here. And we're gonna sell, make him a naked slave as well. He's a naked blacksmith. Dude, we're both naked blacksmiths. We're gonna be famous naked blacksmiths. Do keep the horses, as I said, or pack animals if you do feel the need to travel. Uh, you can actually hold on to the saddles just in case yeah but sell the clothing sell the clothing you might want to mount up we will see how we fare right now we're not gonna spend any more money uh, and we're gonna hold on to all of this uh, unfortunately they can't take our clothing right now so let's buy a more wood for this let's buy a bit more wood uh, where do we have wood here Sheep. So let's buy more of it so they they don't go negative here. Let's get all our money's worth here. There we go. Now we're heading into our first crafting session. Uh, weird looking guy. Uh, we do have efficient charcoal maker. But first perk we picked. That makes it so that we can craft. We need always need charcoal in order to craft. This is pretty straightforward once you understand it. So first you refine, so we can create three charcoal here. And with that, with those three, we can go to smelt here and just smelt items in a smart place. Smelt. That, 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 and now we're out of charcoal. We do have hardwood. Now this is an issue with Banner Kings. We just lost a few hardwood for some weird reason. And this has to do with them being of different quality. This is a normal hardwood with the other ones I could. So just gonna throw that one back in. Quickly have a look here if they have. Yeah, they do have spears. So let's buy, the, those spears are useless. Military forks are better. Smelt. So we're gonna buy two of those. We can't afford it. I'm gonna focus on spears now. Yeah. Prices may vary depending on the mods you're using. Let's not overbuy ourselves here. We do need some money. Uh, Normally, 200 swords, even though it's hard to level them, they sell for quite good compared to what you invest in them. So, different trees here got different amount of recipes. And in order to level up to the next level, you see you have one, two, three, four, five levels here. You need to research all of level one. And then level two and three and four and five and since swords have so many components you need to craft the sword it's gonna take a long time to research all the recipes in swords and that goes both for one handed and two handed when it comes to two handed axes which do sell for a high amount um, they don't have even close to the amount of recipes needed and same thing with Poland's. Poland's got a few bit more but uh, uh, Axis got a few bit less. So th it really depends on what kind of weapon do you want to craft a special good weapon at the start for. Do you want to be an axe guy or a spear guy? There are cutting spears which you can reach research and uh, yeah so it's more like which tree do you want to advance first if you're a melee fighter you want to advance two-handed polearm generally pole arms are better against horses 
uh, and two-handed are generally better against uh, infantry. So choose one to try and progress further with. And what I mean with that is when you smelt stuff, first we're gonna create a few more shark holes here by refining. When you do smelt stuff, you might get a proc to get better recipe. No, we didn't. So, yeah, that was a failure. We're actually gonna tell this guy to smell because he's got so low. Uh, blacksmithing level so he can't efficiently make charcoal if you click this yeah to switch to your companion just click you have to have him in your party of course if you look at us we have the first perk already so when we're making charcoal we can take two hardwood and make three charcoal but our companion can only make one so we're not gonna have him making charcoal uh, however we can having having smelting just to have spam that stamina because stamina is required here. Now we don't have anything more to smell, but we can do another charcoal tick here that will bring us to 16. Uh, refining without perks costs six stamina. If you go to 10 stamina here, you see the smithing stamina, not the percentage. Look at the stat of under the name. Uh, if you go to 10 or below that, you can't do any more until you rest. So since refining costs 6 stamina, we don't want to refine here again. We do want to do a final craft. We want to craft the first weapon here. So what you want to do here now is like, we don't have that many recipes. And from experience I know that pole arms and axes don't sell really well. Unless you get up a little bit. So what we want to do here is actually take two-handed because those are fairly easy to craft. And you're just gonna max out. You want to get as high damage here as possible. You might want to have a look up and down. Is the, does it affect anything? Does it higher or lower the swing speed or damage? Or because not all the time it's the top here, for example. If we turn it down, we still have 76 swing speed, but we're getting a little bit increased handling. So you might want to slide this a bit, see where is the sweet spot. Or you just turn everything to max, because that's normally the, the best. So now we're ready, because we have the materials, since we smelt the light items, we have the materials for this one. So we're gonna craft it straight off the bat, like that. Now we're down to zero. Normally it costs way more, it costs almost like 50 stamina. But as long as you have over 10 stamina left, you can always craft an item. So that's what I'm aiming to do when I manage my stamina. Now let's have a quick look at our companion. He's got 34 left. So if we would, he can also craft this item because we do have the materials for it. But if we would do that now, he would drain all his stamina. And we don't want to do that. So what are we going to do instead? Well, we could actually refine stuff because we don't want to waste here because it's not an efficient charcoal maker but we can improve this by turning one crude iron into one raw iron so we're gonna do that at least two times that looks good it's like hmm, what we're gonna do now is actually smelt this one down smelting down without any perks cost 10 stamina he's got 22 stamina so we're actually gonna smelt down the item we just crafted. When you're smelting down items, you're, you're actually getting double the amount of experience as you do crafting an item. And the, craft, the, the amount of experience you get is determined of the sell price of the item. So, it's gonna smelt this down before we head back to the trader. See, it costs us 10 stamina, he has 12 left. We do have charcoal left, so we can actually make the exact same weapon, but our companion is making it. Never mind these stats, they do affect the self price, but it's no biggie. And see, there we unlocked recipes for 200. 
Sometimes you end up having really good 200 recipes just because they're efficient to sell. Um, especially at the start of blacksmith. So let's have a look here at the trader. Uh, see, it sells for 567. That's not a big, big amount. They don't have that here. We do have money. So we're just gonna actually go and rest a bit. If you play vanilla, you just click here. And now it's auto saving. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna turn that down the interval. And you just rest a bit uh, and wing it. You want to try and rest enough so you're basically full here again. Uh, you don't have to rest to fill full, but I like to do that, generally speaking. Uh, if you're using Banner Kings, you have options here, as long as you're not a criminal or anything. You have options here to take action, and there's different options here. Here we can actually serve the squad for eight hours, and then we rest our crafting stamina at the same time. Uh, so there we go. We did receive a little bit money for that. Not even enough to cover the cost for us and our companion, but anyways. So now we should be, yeah, we're well more than rested here. So we are running roll on charcoal. We are the efficient charcoal maker. So we are gonna use this to create more charcoal. You can see our leveling going up already just by making charcoal. There we go, we can do it two more times even, but we don't have enough charcoal for it. We are gonna spend some here. I believe, there we go. Now we're down to level. So we're gonna look at 200 again. We did level something up, but nothing fancy. So we're gonna check which one of these do create the most damage. Firstly, we only have one pad these, I believe. So let's check around a bit. 78. So that's better than the stop one. So let's go with this card. And let's see which one here. 79. 79 for both. Doesn't really matter. Double check what item is required as well. So now we're gonna craft this one off. And our companion, he doesn't have much to do except smelting these down. So he's gonna take one of them, preferably the other one. Oh, we just unlocked another recipe. Nice, well done. He doesn't really have much to do. So we can actually go out to the vendor to see here. Oh, that sells for 710. Now the vendors got more money again, so we can sell that. If you need the money, we can keep the money, but we're gonna progress in blacksmithing here. So we wanna have a look at cheap items again. And it seems like the spears are fairly cheap here. So we're buying the spears, not these ones, but the militia forks. You have to learn a bit what they generate, but generally short spears, militia spears, don't generate any good crafting materials. So yeah. Keep in mind you do need money for your salary. We do have more than enough here. So we just bought all of those. Not gonna buy that. So now the chances we're gonna actually start progressing in spear tree. Because yeah, we're smelting down spears. And that's a bit what we do prefer over crafting 200 swords if we can avoid it. We are low on wood though. But we will get, sorry, we will get wood when we smelt. So we're gonna have our companion since we don't have any charcoal to produce we're gonna have a smart down of these and checking his stamina looks okay he can do one more tick of that and then he can do one more tick of something else so let's have him do a rot item now he's got 12 stamina left I don't think we researched any polar recipes no not really I can show you the price difference of a polar, just for the sake of things. We do have some buffer here. So we only have that. We don't have any recipes for the middle part here. We do have different spear. Oh, that's nice. Interesting. That would for sure generate, or will it? That 
one is first. You always want to go with a higher tier item because that generates more experience as well. And yeah, let's go with that. It will consume one hardwood. Uh, so yeah. And of course, we don't have enough skill. Gonna go out, double check which sells more. The other one sold for about 400, and that one sells for about 60. So that's horrible trade off. Yeah. If we would have crafted a, a 200 there, we would have sold for 700. Here we're crafting a base, a pole arm, spear, and we sell it to 60. So that's why I recommend you crafting 200s just at the initial start but do buy military forks to smelt them down until you get a good enough recipe for your economy stabilizers in there. While we're at the trader, we're gonna have a look here. We are running low. We do have a military fork still, but yeah, let's not waste money here right now. We're both down on crafting stamina, so we're gonna take a bit, rest a bit, Uh, I should have turned that option off on the autosave. You have to bear with me, guys. So now we're rested for 8 hours. That's now we're close. About half. So let's rest for another 8 hours. This is the Baron King's options again. So, yeah. And let's see here what's going on. Now we're down to this. As you can see now when we craft the smelting simple spears, they don't re really generate any materials. So this isn't even really worth smelting. We'd rather just sell it and buy hardwood instead. So we're gonna do that. But we're gonna smelt this one down. And we're gonna create what we can with charcoal. We're gonna head back out to the trader. No, actually we are. Or rather, I'm sad to say, we do have to, more or less. Let's see here. Let's go and check what it costs us to craft 200 at the moment. Uh, we don't have that many. We have a new recipe again. So you just basically want to check which one. And eventually we will st you will start learning which one does the most damage. 78. Yeah, by far that one. So, we're actually gonna spend the stamina here to create this one. You see, it costed us over, almost over 30. We just leveled up from that as well. Uh, you could hear the ding in the background, and I think we got a new recipe. Sometimes you have to, like, switch place. See, no, we only leveled up. So, now we're actually gonna go out, I believe. Yeah, we're gonna go out and quickly check. We're gonna sell this spear we had. See, another 700 item. We're gonna try and sell so we have a buffer. And, 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 and. let's see here. Do they have any more of those sheep spears? This is a fairly sheep spear. So we're gonna buy that one as well. Could buy this one as well. We can afford it. We could afford actually uh, uh, this mount. And let's head back in here and let's just smelt those down. Actually, gonna tell our. Now, uh, let's focus on our main character here. Gonna smelt those down. See, they generate a lot more than the base spear we got. I don't know. So smelting these down. Checking the stamina. Now we're back so we can craft one more. So we're gonna head to the 200. Actually, we did get upgrades here, but probably not worth it. But you get upgrades when you smelt those spears you buy. So we're gonna make another 200 here. And this is the blacksmithing plant. Basically, you don't need to really move unless you need to hunt for another companion. Because every time you move around the map, it wastes time where you're not blacksmithing, so it depends on how fast you want to build up a base economy. But you can do this back and forth by buying and smelting items and then selling 
a sword. So basically, you can craft several of these two handers for one the price of three four spears. Uh, I hope you will see what I mean here, but uh, this is not this one. The so craft rather, we we're not gonna smart. We want a buffer, this cell one. So actually he can craft one after this, so let's have him smelt, let's have him refine a bit, so we don't waste stamina here. We want to be careful so we don't waste too much materials here, but we should be fine. And yeah, he can craft one of those, we're gonna sell that one as we head back out. And he only crafted one worth 600, but that's okay, in my opinion. Now, we do need something to buy here, I believe. So, let's check the cheapest, cheaper ones. These are okay. Let's buy two of them. We can afford it. We do have food and a little bit of money for salaries. Someone leveled up. Well, yeah, we leveled up. Let's just put this at something at running. We put it on scouting, unless. Yeah, we might get windy. Let's put it on uh, steward, so we might get our wages down. Because we already maxed out the hidden level, we already maxed out the blacksmith thing. So. We're gonna rest a bit again. If you don't have any kings, which gives you a timer, uh, just try and get a feel for how long you need to rest before you fill up. Don't rest for too long, because that will just waste crafting stamina. Yeah, music in background is made by Don. So check their YouTube out. Uh, here we're fully rested again. We are the best charcoal maker in the world. So we're gonna spend the first stamina on charcoal making and then we can have our companion do the smelting for now because he doesn't know much about charcoal making we do so we're gonna do another one there now we can only craft one sword but there's another way to get crude iron that is if we're trying to make iron you will create a crude iron as well. So, but we're good. We're good on crude iron. We can probably craft the sword and still have stamina left because it generally costs about uh, fifty. Uh, I don't think we really leveled up to get any good parts for the pole arm, which is worth it. So we're gonna continue doing two handers because they sell better right now. And we don't really have new recipes. Here's a new recipe though, and this will be interesting. Uh, we're not gonna waste two wrought iron, even though it might be better. If you click here, it shows the one handed stats. It's the handle this time, which decides this. This handle, only two hander. This handle, it's a bastard sword, if you know what that is. You could either use it as a one hander or two hander. Now, if we click the two hander here, you will see the two hander damage. That's 85. I think it's mostly because of the pummel. Yeah, sort of. This one has higher 200 damage. This pummel is expensive in terms of materials. So we're not gonna waste that. It says two wrought iron. We're just gonna make something with one wrought iron still. Because we don't wanna waste material unnecessarily. Thing is here now. Yeah, we can see here it's 78. It looks like two hander. Uh, it's the same with this pummel, so I guess we're okay. The thing is, this one sold for between. If we use this handle, it sold for between uh, 600 and 700. But if we have a 100, 200 handle, it should sell for a bit more. You don't. Doesn't matter which one you click here. It's just to see the stats on the 200. I switched. So we're gonna create this one. It actually costs us less crude iron. But uh, we're gonna create this one. I'm gonna go straight up to the trader just to see if it sells for more or not. 
and as you can see it sells for way more than the other 200 just because it's a Boston sword. So whenever you're crafting two hundred swords, you want to aim to use a Boston sword hilt. And you want to avoid swords which is only classified as two hundred. Because again, the more the item you craft is worth, the more exp experience you get into both your main character and into blacksmith. So, getting a bit out of breath here, but we might as well sell this one to have a buffer. I don't like being too short on money. I'm gonna have a look if they had another spear here. Yeah, let's buy that one, that one, and that one. That's okay buffer for me when we only have a companion in party. So basically spending the amount we spent uh, or sold it for. We bought for a thousand, we sold it for a thousand, but we do generate more materials to craft from gonna have our companions melt these at the moment just because and he can smell once more before his short on stamina and we are going to click 200 be careful so you don't accidentally craft the one hander we do have a new blade here I didn't want to go into that last time but we did you are gonna quickly gonna check this handle and that cheaper pommel um, and then we're gonna check, click 200 here, check 79, that's the one we craft that, Ooh, this one generates more damage, so let's craft that one, basically the same amount of raw iron required, or exactly the same, so he's gonna craft one of those. Uh, we actually do have stamina left, so we're gonna spend uh, uh, energy to make it a charcoal. Actually, gonna smelt this down. We still have energy left to. We could do one of these, for example, or two even. Yeah. And we can still craft that 200. We do get a new guard, so let's see if that one does more damage. 85. 84, yeah, it does more damage. Same materials required. So off we go. Another roughly thousand. Uh, it's sold for less, but we probably just fail, failed the craft. No biggie. This is a good sell. And we do have a lot of materials left still to craft another one. Gonna have a quick look here. If they still have any good spears. No, not really. Now they start running short of materials, which are cheap. So now I. We might want to consider that we're overburdened here. You can sell the material straight off for more money as well. We're not up to the level we actually can use iron in any of our recipes. So you could just sell those off. They sell for quite good and uh, should make us remove the encumbered penalty. But what we're aiming to do here is also we're going to sell these off. We are going to buy ourselves. A mule which removes the overcumbered and we're actually gonna equip these horses and a saddle we could buy a second mule I believe yeah and same thing for a companion he's gonna get a horsey and his saddle back that's why we didn't sell them uh, and we should be ready to go off in just a bit Let's buy the wood they had here because it might not be cheap wood. We're gonna head to ne next settlement actually. But we're gonna be really careful when we travel. Uh, but we wanna head to the next settlement because there were out of spears and cheap stuff here. So quickly heading down here. Make sure you can outrun any robbers and stuff. Don't want to get caught here. And here we go. Anyone in the tavern? Oh, a new companion. So we probably need to save up money Aye. to recruit him. Yeah, he wants almost 4,000. You can have at start three companions. 
just any companion will do at this point. So let's quickly check uh, their trader because we're all out of weapons to smelt. Go check value, they do have military forts here. So let's go for those until we have a bit of a buffer. Unfortunately, they probably don't have hardwood here. So we do need to be more conservative with our hardwood. We do have a lot of shark holes. Uh, let's go back by all their military forts. Yeah, that's good enough for me. Did we have any crafting stamina left? No, we do need to service a card here as well then, I guess. So, let's take service just to keep an eye on the timer. Another round. There we go, and now we need to craft. Now we need to craft to try and sell efficiently. We do need more wrought iron, so we do need to start by smelting. We're gonna tell our companion to smelt. I do think we need six. So let's start with that to go up with that. He can actually smelt down all of them because he's only good at smelting at this point and final crafting, of course. Uh, nothing new exciting here. No. Sorry, dude. It's gonna take a while before you get some interesting recipes in Polar. So basically what we're doing is just working our way here. For some reason this one sold for more. I think it was just a fluke. A bad proc, so, so to speak. So let's go for this one for him. Now we need six. We can smelt another one of those because they weren't worth that much. We still need two, so we're gonna do a refinement to get those. And we're just within the limit so we can craft, but we do exactly wanna save the stamina. So we're gonna refine from the spears. And unfortunately we can't smelt here except that one and we do want to sell uh, start selling stuff so we are going to uh, craft off of this just waste right wait we can do that I just remembered does require one or two there we go and zero stamina quickly gonna sell these off yeah they do sell for less gonna buy the other use the other sh fat blade uh, let's see here do we have any yeah they do have another military fork we do want to have some extra materials and let's rest up aim here is to be able to save up 4000 so we can buy him recruit that third companion and let's head in here and do some smelting again now we have that bug again when it comes to the hardwood which is unfortunate Yeah, we will and two-hander gonna go with that blade hopefully it is sells for better for some weird reason do have a few new handles but stick with the one which does most damage damage generally for some weird reason let's see if it's the might be the pommel causing it go down in price for some weird reason that it loses too much in, in, in piercing or something let's see let's quickly check that out I don't think we have much else to do with our main here no not really I'm gonna sell some of the materials these and I'm gonna that's the issue here but that could 
and uh, how much does that one sell for? A little bit more, so we're gonna go, go with that one. We're up to 2,000 already. Bummer, they're running low on sheep, but this one is okay, I guess. And we do need a few of them. Let's not go too low on money. We're slowly getting up there to recruit him. Hopefully he doesn't take off anywhere. There we go. We're gonna smelt. We could. No, let's just be safe here. Um, smelt down. Do a bit of refining so we sure we have charcoal. And do one of the wrought iron ticks up. That will put us in the position to do a final crop. Seventy-nine. Where does it go that much lower? Weird. Oh well. And sell it back. Still not up to par, but we do need to rest here now. Let's rest, see if something gets produced which is cheaper. We are gonna sell this iron because we don't use it right now. Go and let's do that resting thing. Let's just rest for 8 hours, I figure maybe that's smarter actually to do a short rest and start, considering. Yeah. We have nothing to smelt, so that's an issue, because we didn't buy anything, we want to save money, let's get this up. Now we can do a final craft, which would give us another sword. Let's do that on him. Be careful so you don't accidentally make a one-hander. A new pommel. 86 does more. One cost, one wrought iron still. So actually gonna drain him of all this energy now but it's okay oh we still have room to grab one more but we're all out of materials so we do need to trade this sword in for some spears unfortunately didn't craft that high but we can still buy a few spears here let's buy so we have room and then have our main, actually smelt this down. Now we're in a predicament where we can't really craft. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, well these things happen. Let's just have them smelt something down. Or oh, we can wait for two seconds. Now he can smelt some more. We want to be careful so you don't run out of charcoal. Not one more here. And we have more than enough room to call a sword again. So this is a bit tedious back and forth, but it will result in money eventually once you get going. Don't buy troops because that will just increase your salaries. 
can we do anything else here? No, not really. Let's melt another one of those spears, I guess. Let's head to the vendor, sell that one off. And we're gonna wait with buying anything. We're just gonna rest one tick. to craft from. Let's make the charcoal just to be safe so we have it. And then he can make a few of these. Keep care so you do have the charcoal you need. I don't like spending this stamina for nothing so let's head back to the trader. Sell some of the iron or rather all of it because we're not up to par using it yet check for a good item to smelt these spears are decent can I smelt those down keep in mind we do need charcoal that's why I switched. And he can go off the sword. So let's do that straight off the bat. Oh yeah. We realized that this one sold for more so for some weird reason. There we go. Can he achieve something here? He can smelt another spear. Don't want to run out of charcoal, keep that in mind. Uh, let's melt another spear. He needs two more rock iron. It's gonna run out of charcoal, which is bad. So we're just gonna have him smelt this down and have our main create more charcoal. We leveled up, blacksmithing. On on either your main or your companion, you want this learning parts from new designs and everything. And I prefer this, but you also might want to have this later on when you start advancing. So what I normally do is I have my main uh, have the curious smelter, and then I put the other option for my companions once we get there. Well, well, yeah, we needed to rest a bit. Okay. So here we go again. Uh, losing my train of thought here yeah we need charcoal so there we go we need him to do something useful we can't really do that because we sell we have to sell anything we are gonna head back out and actually sell that that's why I lost my train of thought because we didn't sell anything check for spears which are decent now we're running into similar problem here we're all out of spears and prices are starting to go up if we would buy a sword for example so we're not gonna do that we want to look for spears actually in the start with cheap axes but spears is a good way to go at the start but these base spears are no bueno so let's just jump back to Sibir we do have a bit of money to travel Let's quickly head here. I don't want, really want to waste energy, so let's go head out. Be be, again, be careful when we travel so we don't run into looters. Oof, like that. Run around them if you can. Here we go. Let's see what they have stocked up on anything. 
Unfortunately, yes. Look, and they're even cheaper here. Well, that's great. And they probably have fairly cheap hardwood here as well, if we want to invest in that. So, let's sell all the iron as well. Uh, we do have to keep in mind that we had a companion in the other settlement, but uh, we do want to keep finding good deals as well. So we're going to smelt this one down, checking the stamina, smelting this one down, and two-hander. Still only rank ones. That's a rank two though. Yeah, I didn't realize it till now. You always wanna... No, let's just stick with the rank one. Because it's 100, 200, it deals sell for generally more. Uh, let's see here. Let's have... We're not gonna have him smelt anymore. We are gonna have him make... Convert crude iron into wrought iron. But we don't want to waste the last one, so let's have him. He can't craft the sword, that's unfortunate. So let's have him just do another water iron. Gonna sell off that sword. Gonna see now we just broke 2000 again, and we're gonna rest up a little bit. Your own stamina is more important than your companions. There we go. So we're gonna have him. No, we do need charcoal. So we're gonna refine the charcoal. We are gonna have him smelt one of the shafts. Or rather we can do that ourselves, just because we have the curious smelter now. So we have two. Can we craft smelt one more? No, not without going too low. Do need the charcoal. We just leveled up again. Always go out when you level up, in case you level up so you get an attribute point, because then you want to spend it here on endurance. No, we didn't. So let's just put it on scouting. Never mind these. This is the important for blacksmithing and what we're going through here. And then I hope you get the drift. You slowly, slowly will progress upward. Uh, he can craft now, our main. Still only level 1s. I noticed this was a level 2, but it's not a two bastard sword. And we did notice that sold for more. So let's just keep on doing what we did. And that's it for that. We're going to have him actually convert a few crude iron into wrought iron. And then we're done here. Then head to the trader. We need to stock up on a bit of things. Uh, like either a hardwood, which they didn't really have, or a spute, which they do have here. Let's buy some hardwood as well. You can trade that for the iron. Just a few of them to have a buffer. We don't want to get overburdened here. Keep that in mind. I think we do have one apple too much, but yeah. Here we go. We're earning money from that. So now we're soon up to 4,000 again. Just one more sword. Uh, we can't. We need to rest though.
Let's head back in here. Did we buy something to smell? Yeah, we did. Awesome. We don't have... We can't... Yeah, uh, we have that bug. Uh, this is an issue. Pretty annoying. Gonna actually do the shark hole. All of them, sort of. Like that, we do miss, so we're gonna have him smelt this time, and he can refine one of them as well. Two hundred sword. can't really do anything except maybe smell but I want to focus that on main if we can so not much for him to do right now it's a bit lazy and um, there we just broke almost 4,000 we could head back to buy a companion I think you will get my drift yeah just buy the low value ones make sure you don't run out of shark hole and that's how you slowly progress uh, to get your money off blacksmithing. It's tedious, but it's well worth it in the end. Um, if you do want to look, uh, see how, how it looks in the end and how much you earn from different things, I made another video just recently. It's called Mini Tutorial, Gems of Blacksmithing. That's, I'm showing there a bit of the gem recipes you can use both in terms of money and in terms of uh, good unique items that people might not think about exist in the game so i think this will be it for this video blacksmithing is a grind but it's a good thing to do early in the game you don't need to do it at the start but i do recommend it because as you see you can easily build up a base economy here we only spent a few days in game time and we have quadruple the amount of money we had when we started and we still have very low party wages and as long as you keep your party small and you make sure your companions have a horse and a saddle uh, and you have mules enough so you can carry things basically if you have two companions you can have two mules if you look at the speed here now there's really no negative here except the cargo cargo within capacity that's nothing to worry about slower party setting is banner kings but if we buy one to one horse too many as you can see it went down because we get a herding penalty that's because we have three pack animals you can only have one pack animal per person in your party with two in our party uh, so yeah keep that in mind to keep your speed up to avoid fights uh, if you don't run like running around naked, tough luck. No, I'm kidding. Just makes it uh, the first day a bit slower if you don't sell your gear. I recommend selling your gear and then buying it back if you want to start fighting once you have a little bit more money. But uh, yeah, that's basically how you kickstart blacksmithing. Uh, you can do it once you start fighting. And um, that way if you start fighting, for example, looters, you will get weapons to smelt down. Do keep in mind, that most looters have the useless weapons like for example those spears which i showed you which uh didn't really uh generate anything in terms of smelting except uh a crude iron which is like no no not worth it uh keep in mind that most lo looters have those bad quality items so yeah but blacksmithing is a great way to support your army uh, in peacetime, uh, especially if you gather a lot of weapons while you're out doing war or fighting looters. Uh, once peace hits, you can just spend it staying in a town, smelting all those weapons, crafting a good weapon, selling it, and that way you will earn millions eventually uh, from blacksmithing alone. So you don't really need to depend on having workshops, having caravans, etc., uh, etc. Uh, you don't even have to have high steward uh, to keep wages down because you're making so much out of blacksmithing. Um, so, 
you don't really need to bother about other things. As long as you don't get looted when you have a bunch and bunch and bunch of weapons on you which you're planning to smell. So rule number one, don't die, don't get captured. Always be careful, always keep your movement speed up. Uh, yeah, because if you die you're not going to do anything. So that's just a slow long tutorial on how to kickstart your blacksmithing. I'm sure there might be other tricks and tips, but that's generally how I do it. Um, it's a slow grind. It kicks off eventually when you start being able to just buy good items. But do keep in mind that uh, a higher price uh, might mean uh, more experience when you smelt it down. But it doesn't necessarily mean that... Uh, that it generates more items when you smelt it down so this sword costs 500 generates two rotor this sword uh, this spear costs a thousand and it doesn't generate anything we really can use so yeah keep in mind try and learn what gives what try buying the cheaper items first avoid the really really farmer like items Hammers are okay, like blacksmith hammers and wooden hammers and stuff, those are okay. Man, but low quality spears, uh, like hackets, those farm pickets, uh, scythes, farm equipment in general, except blacksmithing tools, they smell for really bad, bad stuff. The same thing goes with very simple spears, such as this one and malicious spears just sell them straight off don't even bother trying to smell them so that's it uh do check in my real grammar campaigns i'm having uh, i have an old one uh which is roman era which is sort of running towards its end and every second day i upload from a, a nordling campaign which is this faction we will actually focus on uh, fighting, uh, gen getting settlements, progressing the New Orleans raid generally all over Caradia. Uh, so do check those storylines out. Um, if you want more content or if anything is unclear, either on this or the drama stuff I make, uh, please ask, just ask in the comments. I don't mind. Uh, uh, doing things for people who actually ask stuff. Um, Banner Kings is a complicated game. Uh, it's got lots of depths to it, but uh, take it from one who's played it for a long time. Blacksmithing is worth it. Uh, it might seem boring, but it gives you a base stable economy to work from. Uh, and once you learn and see the tricks and tips of it, you will like sell a sword for 10 to 20,000 and you can just buy swords and just money print because if you can buy a sword by I don't I think we can access this this is one of my special gems in that special gems video once you reach this in 200 which is you do fairly quick because selling 200 is a money maker until you get up and find a good 200 axe or 200 uh, coal arm recipe. So what I generally do is I just do as we, I showed you now. I just craft 200 swords sell and then I buy spears and smelt. And from the smelting experience, especially if you have this perk I showed you, curious smelter, you do get recipes and spears. So even if you buy low level spears, you will eventually get better and better spears. Uh, so then you can start making good spears and sell on them if you want. But generally, I'd say selling 200 swords and buying spears is the best way to go to try and balance it out. Those really good 200 spears are very flexible in combat, especially if you mounted and new at the game. If you find it hard to thrust with your spears, you can craft cutting spears. But do check out, instead of me going into that in this video, because that would probably just take too long. If you want hints on which recipes to go for, which are more or less money printers, instead of me showing you here, go check out my other video.
called Games of Blacksmithing. It's on the same, cha same channel. Just mini tutorial Games of Blacksmithing. Take care, guys. I'm not going to go in further in this video. Uh, I'm just going to continue on my own campaign. So don't forget to have fun. Uh, combining blacksmithing and having fun is good. But when you're involved in a kingdom uh, and you pledge yourself to a kingdom, if you choose to go that route, uh, blacksmithing is a great occupation to deal with, to print money basically, uh, instead of running around across the map looking for quests. You can actually just print money by blacksmithing, maybe going from town to town to search arenas to keep your fighting skills on par, uh, because arenas are a good way to level up. Uh, so take care guys, that's my base tips for blacksmithing at, at the start. Uh, I'm sure there are more quick uh, videos about exactly how to do things with graphics and stuff. But I'm not into that. I'm always live recording. Uh, I don't have an editor. I can cut videos, but I normally just let it flow. So thanks guys. A bit why in the end, but uh, any questions, drop it in the comments.